water. It's important to our way of life in the Northwest, and not just for recreation purposes. Seattle City Light depends on water to generate electricity. And salmon, whether here at Ballard's Locks in Seattle, on the Columbia or at the Skagit, depend upon water for healthy life cycles. Water isn't something we can make more of. We've seen the effects of drought on our utility in the past few years, and it's changed our perspective on water resources. I'm Sharon Bennett, and on this issue of NTV, we'll talk about forces that are changing city light. Hydropower and environment are two of the reasons. And I'm Terry Kakita. We'll also look at the conservation plan enthusiastically endorsed by the Seattle City Council. You know, last month we said that we'd be spending an entire issue of NTV devoted to why city light must change. Instead, a video special is being produced to go along with this paper, which all of you should receive and read. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, ask your supervisor and make sure to see the video special. Sharon, since the time I came to work at City Light, environmental concerns and regulations have continued to grow. We're constantly looking at various uh, compliance requirements to protect environmental quality and protect human health. This is another factor changing the way we do business at City Light. We've talked about our emphasis on water, and the last snow survey of the season took place over Memorial Day weekend at the Skagit. Almost all the snow has run off about three weeks faster than usual. This means that the remaining snowpack is 10% lower than last year at the same time. Overall snowpack was about 30% of normal on June 1st, down from 50% of normal on May 1st due to the warm weather and warm rain. Ross Lake levels are closer to normal than they were last summer, and the impact on recreation is still being determined, but it is optimistic. Normal rain over the past couple of months has improved the reservoir refill outlook. As the days get longer, we hope we'll be able to enjoy some of our summer sunshine. With problems after dark downtown and in Pioneer Square, sparked a call for more street and floodlights. As the lights go in, utility staff are working on a mayor's task force to help merchant groups and citizens improve safety on the streets of downtown and Pioneer Square with lighting and more city services. The Downtown Seattle Association is paying installation charges on 26 new lights and merchants will pick up the monthly cost. You know, speaking of street lights, when they're operating system-wide, they draw about one-tenth of city lights total load. 100 average megawatts of electricity. That's the amount of electricity City Light expects to acquire during the next 10 years with utilities' new conservation plan. The plan was unanimously approved by the City Council in early May and will acquire 56 average megawatts from the commercial sector, 26 average megawatts from industrial customers, and 18 average megawatts from residential conservation efforts. In a time when the utility is closely examining resources and all programs and services, the new conservation programs are good investments. Well, first of all, we're going to be trying to quadruple our production of conservation acquisition over the next 10 years uh, compared to the last 10 years. And that's in order to meet the goal of meeting all of our load growth over the next 10 years with conservation. And in quadrupling that output, we are now planning only to increase our staff by 10 uh, FTEs. Uh, that's we were able to do that by working very hard to look at ways to redeploy our existing staff into uh, production and to use uh, increased use of the private sector. So we actually, during the summer of 92, got uh, kind of a jump on the right sizing and right sized ourselves to be able to quadruple production, only adding 10 to a base of 83. The cost of implementing the plan is $390 million, with $280 million coming from the Bonneville Power Administration. Compared to the cost of new generating plants or buying power from other utilities, conservation is the cheapest way to provide power for the region's growth. Lots of input from public interest groups was involved in the plan development. Representatives like Dave DeBus from the Northwest Conservation Act Coalition praised the plan. I think a lot of people have traditionally thought of conservation as simply a customer service, something that the utility does to make its, its residential customers feel better about the utility, and that it's not really connected with uh, planning or power purchases or anything else. 
this program shows emphatically that conservation is an alternative means of, of providing those same energy services and keeping the lights on at the lowest economic and environmental cost. And so I think that there may uh, be some confusion among people at C City Light and uh, in the general community that what we're doing is these, these programs, these feel-good programs, when in fact what Seattle's doing is meeting all of its load growth in the most cost-effective way uh, possible. And so um, one of the things that I think that City Light employees should keep in mind is that in a time where rates are rising, both for Bonneville and for City Light, conservation is the, the medication. It's the thing that enables people to get a handle on their rising energy costs. Another recently approved city program helps conserve fuel used for transportation and reduce the number of commuter vehicles on the road. It also conserves a few dollars in the pocket of everyone who participates. The city's new commute trip reduction plan shaves $15 off the cost of each employee's monthly transit fare. Bus passes from Metro, Community, and Pierce Transit are available to city employees at a $15 discount. Van pool riders can apply the face value of a bus pass to their monthly van pool fees. Ferry system users are also included. Foot passengers receive a $15 rebate when they turn in receipts and ticket book covers for 20 trips. Bus passes and ferry ticket rebates are available at the Municipal Building in the Department of Finance, City Light Building, Main Lobby, City Light South Service Center, and City Light North Service Center. The program also discounts carpool fees at certain garages. For more information, call 684 0816. Just a few miles away from these locks, by our canal substation, a big project is underway. Groundbreaking took place in April on the System Control Center on Northwest 46th Street. The new SCC will replace the current power control center on Queen Anne to monitor and control generation, transmission, and distribution of electrical service to our customers. The SCC should be occupied in April 1994. You know, Terry, we've all heard the phrase, you deserve a break today. Well, some City Light employees had a break of a different kind. A massage break to increase awareness of reducing on-the-job injuries. Breaks and stretching for office workers reduce stress and the likelihood of repetitive motion injuries. The 50 available spots filled up quickly during the two-day sign-up period, with 20 people on the waiting list. I was able to squeeze in for a few moments. Well, that's really the kind of break I like. You know, Sharon, some City Light employees were able to rub shoulders with City Council members as they receive recognition and awards for their bright ideas in the Council Chambers. Employees whose suggestions are used receive certificates or cash prizes based on the savings to the utility and the City. This invention, the liquefier or air knife to access buried cable, came from laborer Kimberly Wasman. Bright ideas are accepted year-round. Look for submission forms at all City Light facilities. Every summer, employees on the High Voltage Performance Committee begin their search for individuals and teams who excel in their work. The nomination period is now open, and the winners will be recognized at the Light, Power, and Pride reception in December. The committee works hard to determine the winners. Once we get the nominations, we start our investigation process sometime in August and September. And that's when each of the members are maybe assigned six or seven nominees that we investigate. And then we call or we, we interview six or seven people regarding the specific employee. And, and then after that, when we have all our reports together, then we go back to the committee and we do our reporting. And that's when we start the um, decision of who we're going to um, award as outstanding employees for the utility. All employee memos and nomination forms went out June 1st. If you need more information or help filling out a form, give Jeannie a call at 684-0786. Well, we've come to the end of another show. Sometimes we hear about employee activities that we'd like to cover, but we haven't heard, heard them early enough to make it possible. 
So give us a call at 684-3112 as soon as you realize you've got a story idea for NTV. You can also call that same number if you'd like to borrow a previous tape. We'll see you next month for NTV. I'm Terry Kakita. And I'm Sharon Bennett. Have a great summer. Bye-bye.